All right. Hello, everyone. Um, it is just me this week. Reese is not feeling great, so he is going to probably be watching the stream. So hi, Reese. We hope you get better soon. And hello to any of you who are watching this recorded. Uh, so anyway, I hope you all have been doing well trying to think uh what we've been doing since the last stream and my memory's a little bit fuzzy for this past week because last thursday oh last thursday was the really great juju community um office hours that we had with sahini and pedro if you have not seen that go to our youtube page that's where um, all the videos on demand live for over a week. It could still be on Twitch. Um, but if you missed it last week and you want to know what Juju is about and get involved with that community, it's it was such a fun talk. We had a really great time with them. And so I just encourage you all to watch that. But yeah, that was the day after we moved out of our apartment. As you can see, we're still moving in here. Um, but otherwise, let's see, news in the community. The wallpaper submissions just keep on coming in. And y'all, they're fantastic. I We are going to be ridiculously spoiled for choices you all have some amazing photographic and artistic talent and so oh hey so um hello french uh, hello yannick hello daniel um good to see some um some people from the ubuntu mate community and from the ubuntu hideout here uh so yes so um please go through and i will Links might be coming slower today because it is again just me, and so um, and so I will post that link to the community artwork discourse thread where you can get inspired and don't forget to post your own your own artwork there. Um, submissions are open until I want to say August twentieth, so you have over a month and then we will be announcing the winners we'll have 10 finalists and two winners who will be included on the um official image for 2110 uh and then we will announce those at the august desktop in dava at the end of the month i have not noticed any macaroni art yet so people joey is you know we still need to to prove that there can be macaroni art in the open source community. So if you've been waiting on that, don't forget to put that up. Uh, let's see, we have some, hopefully this time next week, we will have kind of um, an update to give on the whole um, possible replacement for the GPG key or an alternative to it for those of us like me who um, when aren't technically minded and it took them hours to sign theirs and so we will have um kind of an update on how that's going forward that was all spurred by mark johnson's proposal earlier this year and what else um i feel like there was something else okay i think that that might be it for the community updates so i know that july is kind of i think everyone's going on vacation it's a bit quiet but i know that things as especially as we get closer to october will just pick up so and of course if you have any community news just feel free to post it on discourse on these on the threads that we post and we will be happy to let everyone know so uh, moving on, this is where if I had better production value, I'd have a clev I'd have a clever transition here. But we are going to be going through some Ubuntu tutorials. So um, who here in the chat, either in Twitch or um, Twitch or YouTube, has used one of the tu tutorials or has maybe even written one?
Anyone? Okay, well, let me share my screen and this of course is going to be fun because Okay, I know sharing screen works easiest on two monitors, but I don't have the other one, so it can deal. All right. Oh, cool. Yeah, the snap tutorials, I think, are really helpful. So, oh, hey, so you did one for Snap and one for Flutter. And I have a feeling, especially as we start moving towards the new, uh, the new launcher, which is going forward, that's definitely a question for the, the desktop team and their Indabas that we will have more Flutter tutorials. Um, so that's awesome. So what we are going to do is we are going to go through the Yay, the how to write a tutorial. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to share the link for those of you who would like to follow along. These are extremely helpful. And I think I followed it when, oh my gosh, when I got started for Ubuntu Mate. And there was something that we wanted to put on our website. And I remember finding one of the tutorials and going, this is extremely helpful. I think it was maybe on burning an ISO, which was something that before I started getting in, involved with open source, I had no idea what burning an ISO meant. And then I was having to do a page on how to do it. And I'm like, I need a site that tells me what this process is. And the tutorial was just brilliant. So, yeah, so this is, um, so I don't know when this was made, but this is extremely helpful. And so, um, so what we are going to do is to go through this. So obviously this is uh, kind of a template to help you get started with the tu tutorials. What's nice is that these are made for super beginners. They're also made for if you're writing far more advanced tutorials, you can mark them as such. And they can be meant for people with a lot more experience. So this is just going to kind of be this is how did Reese put it when we were figuring out what we would do? This is going to be maybe the most meta Ubuntu community office hours ever because it's a tutorial on making tutorials following a tutorial. But this is just kind of going through Markdown, which oh, if you haven't used Markdown, it's great. Um, kind of the, the specific little quirks of Markdown for the engine that we use, um, rendering it locally to make sure it looks the way you want and how to get it ready for review so the documentation team can go, this is great. And so, um, so what you need to set this up is an Ubuntu Discourse account, which when we are actually going to be going, we will be going through the process of how to make that. And so um, that will actually be covered during the course if for some reason you haven't joined the Ubuntu Discourse yet. So, oh! Yeah, I forgot other bit of community news. We have a new Ubuntu. Um, okay, we have a new Ubuntu member here in the YouTube chat. We have Big Pod who was just voted in this past week. So congratulations. And I am uh, and for those of you who uh, might be thinking about, oh, should I apply for membership if you have six months of sustained contribution to the project if you can sign and adhere to the code of conduct then and if you want to do more with the with the project say you want to maybe apply for a motu or even a core dev one day and uh, or else if you maybe want to run for leadership in a few years then go for 
membership. It's a really great thing. And we also do have the um, certificate form back up and running thanks to our wet web team. And so that is, we have a discourse post about that. So if you're a member and don't have your certificate yet, go to that form, fill it, it out, and we will try to get those on the way as soon as possible. All right, and so again, uh, I will try to answer chat as quickly as I can. I'm just doing this on my ThinkPad, so <laughs> I miss that second monitor a lot. But um, but Reese is also here in the comments, and so he will be able to help. Oh, and he's asking if the tutorials can be translated. It, and that is a great question to ask because having these in multiple languages would really be helpful. Um, and if and if it's something that can't, maybe then that's something that we can raise that could be possibly possibly brought up in the future. Again, no guarantees, but that would be very useful and. Ubuntu has an amazing group of translators who we will be bringing on in a future session. All right, so general guidelines. Okay, so obviously there is a very wide audience for tutorials. You're getting people who learn in really different ways. You're getting people from different experience and skill levels and so you have to craft a tutorial that's going to speak to all of them and so here you really want to keep it small and so you're going to see in the tutorial that we're going to write here is literally how to sign on to the community like how to get started with Ubuntu with the Ubuntu communities com communication tools like how do you sign up for launchpad how do you sign up for discourse how do you sign up for irc kind of three very discrete things that at the end of the tutorial people will know how to do and they will have a launchpad account they will have a discourse account and they will have an irc nickname and be signed on to some of the essential channels so that's why you know that's why we're following on the be focused on one topic or very small group of related topics they're all three things related to communication there's a tangible results we're going to get at the end which is you will have accounts on all three of these things um, be short so this is something that ideally we want people to be able to do we would hope in 15 minutes or less. And so again, this is something that is meant to not take people a lot of time. Um, have short manageable steps. You don't want, and that's where get, getting feedback helps because nobody likes tutorials where they have, where <laughs> I don't know if you have seen like the, like the draw an owl and it goes from like a collection of like rough shapes to a full blown owl. You don't want that kind of tutorial because then you're just like, how did they get from there to there? You want to, I mean, you don't want to have like just every microscopic steps, but you want to have a clear succession of steps that tell people what to do next. And that's when you get, um, and that's when you get good feedback, um, especially with people who are unfamiliar with this. So here, like we would probably bring this to someone who had never done anything with the Ubuntu project, who didn't know what Launchpad was, who had maybe never used D Discourse or IRC, and you would get them to go through it. And if they could go through it, without too ma many problems and you know you didn't skip any steps and so um, and then you want and then also you want it to be you want it to be fun we always kind of want to have a bit of lightheartedness in our writing uh, and so just kind of 
you know, make it a make make it a bit playful. Don't make it too joking and and again, if you're a primary English speaker, you want to kind of avoid a, a lot of like um what's the word? Kind of things like metaphors, similes, kind of um things that could possibly be difficult to translate for a non-primary speaker. So those are all things to keep in mind. And so yeah, friendly and the same tone. And again, so if you kind of read through this and see how they do it, then that's how your tutorial sh should be. And kind of, you know, we like to use we. And so it's like, you should, but use things like we. And so, um, and so I think that this kind of gives you a good general overline of how your tutorial should, should generally look. All right. So tutorials are built on, they're built as a single topic. And so we're actually, I have too many, Let's go through this and then we're going to go through the discourse post and it's kind of tricky. I wish I could share two screens at once, but I don't think I can. And so we're, we're just going to go through this and then we'll do, we'll do the actual to, we'll do the actual tutorial at the end. So actually, oh, no, 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 no. Anyway, so we know that we will click that next. So title, obviously you want it to be kind of short and sweet, um, concise, but specific, which is, which I think is kind of a hard thing for, for people to do because sometimes either people get hyper specific, but more often you get kind of vague and it's like, so you wouldn't want creating a bootable USB. It's like, well, how are you creating that then? But if you're doing something, creating a, a bootable USB stick on Windows 10, now Windows 11, then that is much more focused for whoever's going to use that. And you want to if anything, keep people from having to click through too many tutorials to get to yours. Help them out with the titles um, to find exactly what they're doing. And so here we each have, and so your, uh, and so the step titles. And if you haven't used Markdown, hopefully that's something that's a little bit um, Markdown and uh, yes, and so the Markdown re render engine that we use is the one that is um, inherently built into Discourse. So if you've ever used um, Discourse, it's that Markdown render engine, which is good to know which one that you're doing because they're all a little different. Like if you're doing Markdown for Jekyll on GitHub pages, it is slight, there's some slight differences. And so, but if you've ever posted to the Ubuntu Community Hub or any other discourse, it is the same markdown that you use there. So, and so this is, um, so the durations, this is meant to give people an idea estimate but if you have time you know of course to go through this tutorial and then to see how much time it does take it's better to give people uh, as accurate an estimated time as it's going to be and so here if we basically see what this is supposed to look look down we have um what this is supposed to look, look like in markdown on discourse. It's nothing too exotic. 
which is really nice. And that's, I think, the whole point of having documentation on Discourse is that it's easy to post. Uh, and Markdown is just becoming more and more common. And so theoretically, this should be kind of a low barrier of entry for content creation on Discourse. And we definitely are moving towards this of wanting to have more things there um, because they're just accessible. People can go back to them. People can link to them. It's extremely useful. And it's funny because, you know, I know even I sometimes get in this trap of just thinking, well, it's just a forum. And Discourse is really a lot more than a forum and it's got all these great tools like this that you can use to help build communities through better documentation. So now that we've got the metadata and the basic structure which is pretty basic we want to get to the content. All right. Yeah, Big Pot, that is a good point, and I'm just going to bring this up here. Every Markdown implementation is slightly different, and that is, in my opinion, super annoying. Big Pot, I agree, because, as, because if you're used to it working one way, then you go to something that uses a slightly different implementation of Markdown, it is frustrating. So, so at the very least, I like that what this does is that it tells you kind of what are the things you need to know and use spe specifically for this. So, all right. So you want the overview. This is kind of like because when you are going through the tutorials, you want something really quick to let you know, okay, what is this tutorial about? Is this relevant to what I need? You have a what you'll learn, which gives you a, okay, it's like at the end of this tu tu tutorial, I'm going to have this skill or I'm going to have this particular bit of knowledge. Awesome. And then a what you'll need. So obviously, if you were wanting to do that bootable USB stick, you would obviously need a USB stick if you were doing something with an S D card. And so if there are, um, especially I know that there are a lot of Raspberry Pi people uh, who are in our community, which is fantastic. I know that there are some very talented, um, some very talented Raspberry Pi people right here in this chat. Um, French guy, um, C C EH, who is doing some really cool things on building stuff on pies. And so you would want to mention, well, what maybe what specific kind of pie would people need to have? What kind of um, media would they need? All those kinds of things. And yes, discourse is open source. And it is that's and it is, I believe, if you have an open source project that you either have a vastly reduced or possibly free usage of discourse. I'm not quite sure, but um, I know that they try to make themselves as useful and as easy to use to open source projects as possible, which is awesome. And just the community tools and dashboards are, it's really great if you have been thinking of giving it a try. And you can also self-host discourse, which is something that definitely our community is really, really well positioned to use. So that could even be a tutorial, just saying. All right. So this, so the summary, so we got kind of here's what to put in the summary. And then we have um, kind of how we're going to do it in Markdown here. And so here we have, again, that double hash for the overview. We again have that duration, which is, you know, it'll take people about a minute to read it. And so,
Okay, so here what they're doing is, this is something, oh, turning a web website into a desktop integrated app. And then here, and then so this is the, the, set, the set summary section here. So basically about a, two sentences long, and then it gives you a link to the website. So fairly easy. And then what you'll have under that is going to be what you'll learn. And this, uh, and this has the three hashes and then it's presented with bullet points. So the markdown here, I know that some instances of markdown use the asterisk for bullet points. Here, evidently we use the, the dashes. So again, going back to what Big Bod said, there's individual quirks of Markdown on different platforms. And so, and okay, and the what you'll need is here, we see that you can use it for kind of not only physical hardware, but also what kind of knowledge, what kind of, what kind of basic, um, Fundamental skills. Do you need to do this t tutorial, which is good because this can, especially if you're getting to something that is the slightly um, above a beginner level, then that would be really helpful. Like if I would see this, I would be like, well, I have an Ubuntu desktop 16.04 or higher. I have some very basic command line knowledge, I feel like I could actually do this. And oh, this is kind of a little bit of a bonus, but you but we have these surveys that you can build in. So if you're wanting to really get some feedback on a tutorial that you make, then you can add that. And this would be a really great thing to copy paste. Yes, we do use Google Analytics as the survey backend. And so I know that um, everyone has their own comfort level with that. And so again, this is something completely optional and you can choose to use it or choose to not have it in there. All right, and so when we put all this together, here's what the markdown is going to be. So overview with the double hash, the duration, about two sentences to describe what it is that we're going to do, links to anything that you might use, then a sh um, maybe two or three bullet points about what you're going to learn using the dash, and then about, and then a short description of either what hardware or what basic skills do you need. And so this kind of gives you just, here's, here's the basic step. Yes, they are reviewed afterwards. And so they are re reviewed by the documentation team. Okay. So basically on do's and on do's and don'ts. And so you want, um, so five to 10 minutes per step is, is ideal. You don't want to, uh, like I would say for what we're going to do, like filling out the single web page would probably be a step rather than having each box you fill out be a step. And of course, uh, you know, this is again, if you want feedback on these, that the, this is a great thing to ask someone. It's like, do these steps, do they seem way too involved and complicated and long or do they just seem choppy and short? And again, if this is, if it feels like this is starting to get long, then think about, well, is this a stage? And is this maybe just, it's like, is this a first stage of the, of a broader tutorial? And is this se second part that I, that I started, should it really be its own 
tutorial. And again, think about, okay, well, for this part, I have this specific goal in mind. But if you notice that it's like, oh, wait, now it seems like we're on this completely separate goal, that's when it might be good to spin that off into its own um, into its own tutorial there. And so if you think about it, it's almost like paragraphs when you're writing an essay. You want each of them to be about a distinct thing. And if you start noticing that what you're doing really doesn't have anything to do or is only tangentially related to what you started doing, that's a sign that maybe it needs to be its own separate content. Yeah. Okay. So don't have too many steps. Um, so I don't know about you. I love to cook. I've seen recipe books that have like 25 different steps for one recipe. Then one of those steps is a link to a recipe that itself is 25 steps. And guess what? I don't make those recipes because that is just way too long. So think about, you know, you've got someone who you don't want to have like to to have them go, oh my God, I'm, I'm only on step five of how many? Make it, you know, again, five to 10 steps. If you, if you start getting into the high teens, some, either your tutorial's too long and there's kind of a bunch of content together that needs to be split or you're dividing your your steps into too small of a bucket. Again, this is a thing that getting feedback from people and having people actually try to follow them, that will really help you. And also, think of this, this is a great thing. It's kind of like, okay, it's kind of like one of those choose your own adventure books, but with one certain path. And so you want to have a feeling that when they've gotten that step done that they really have accomplished something and so that they feel like all right I can do this I feel ready and excited to go on to that next step now this one we're not really going to do this in our tutorial that we're going to make here because we're not going to make intentional mistakes on a wet website that's kind of mean but sometimes learning um learning to fix your errors like um oh my gosh like when I learned how to knit learning how to screw up and recover from those mistakes or hot shot driving we've got some of the fellow drivers here I practice running into walls so I could get out of that so sometimes especially if you're making for um, if you're making a tutorial for something that is that can be tricky and it's easy for people to mess up and frustrating when you mess up some maybe guide them through that it's like okay it's like we're just going to kind of do this the wrong way see what that looks like see how you recover from that and that can give people a lot of of confidence when they inevitably mess up when they're actually doing it so i think that even though this doesn't apply to ours um i think that this will that this could be really helpful for some of the more technically minded ones so i think we're going to kind of pause there um, so first of all, and sorry, um, I see Anthony in the, um, in the YouTube chat. So that would be a great question for something like our Indaba. And I see that thankfully there are some community people who are being awesome and answering you, but, um, the community office hours, uh, right now we're just going through making a tutorial.
tutorial and I'm really good with people less good with the tech side of things so but thank you for answering those and again uh, we'll be having our next desktop in uh, our next desktop in Daba at the end of July and those would be great questions for that all right so I'm going to remove the all right, and now I'm going to share a new screen. All right. Window. All right. Oh, actually, I'm going to go back to this. Ha ha. So. I think it. This was in the the metadata and structure. And what we'll do here, so it's a little bit easy to kind of just toggle back and forth. I don't know what quite that was. Oh, because I clicked the wrong button. That's what. Also, Reese, we really need to get some background music for these streams because I don't know it's just it's really weird to do this with no music and just having it be completely silent. So, um, for those of you who've streamed on Twitch, it is nice to kind of have those um, those background tools. And so these are where all the tutorials live. And so these would be the ones that would possibly get uploaded and put on the tutorials page. So this is kind of where this is where they would go first. And so we're going to make a new topic. All right. And so title it's like I'm getting started with community communication tools. All right, so that's there. And so I think that we have done a good job with keeping our title spe specific, um, but also kind of short. And so, again, we want to introduce our content. All right. And so we have our overview. Uh, let's see. Um, To the Ubuntu project. Um, there are several communication tools on, that we use. These include Launchpad, of course. I think that we will actually use it what you are reading now. And IRC. In this tutorial, we will go through how to set up accounts on all three of these platforms. and to get started. Okay, so here we've got the overview there. Oh, I almost for, almost forgot. 
duration. Uh, right. Right. Popping back into chat, everything seems everything seems good for now. Oops. Good to know. All right, and now we want to go back to okay. What you'll learn. All right, and we know we need the three. Three hashes. For anyone who's listening, watching, etc., et are there any tutorials that you have? I mean, okay, besides the fact that I really hope we can get the translation thing started because that would be fantastic. Are there any tu are there any tutorials that people here have been thinking of that you would like to make or you would like to see what you'll learn let's see that is weird um it's just the dash makes the dot that's so strange what you'll learn to create an account on launchpad into single sign-on. see. Uh, how to create an account on Discourse. How to register a NIC on IRC and join the um, into channels ibera.net. All right, those seem like three really distinct goals. Can we get a tutorial on how to make cheesecake? Maybe on a very special episode of the Ubuntu community office hours where we get the cooking of Ubuntu people to come. And as long as Yannick, you promise to, um, we got a question here of, can we get a tutorial on how to make cheesecake? So was just saying, if we ever get the cooking of Ubuntu people, then I would love to do something like that. Um, but it would be hard because then we would all just get even hungrier than we normally would be. So, all right, what you'll learn and what you'll need. See, and what you'll need is um, this computer with internet access and probably um, a oh an email address liable access okay that seems like it's it seems pretty solid there. So, <laughs> yeah, food is always going to come up sooner or later. I finally got to my tea that I brewed um, f for this, which is really nice. And, oh, my gosh, I just need because duh. I just for some reason did not get a good night's sleep last night. But. Which is funny as I'm trying to put all this together. All right, so now we've got the overview. So now we have step. So if we think about it, step one is going to be 
create a launch pad which is going to be hilarious because I all right now I need to get a new screen share Ooh, how to run GUI applications inside LXC containers okay that that sounds really cool so oh and I'm going to post this because I think that would be an idea not only for an awesome tutorial but I know that you all do video podcasts on Twitch that would also make some great content and I would totally watch that all right so now I have to get a different screen share it's kind of unfortunate that I can't change this <laughs> okay I love all the people are just talking about how they enjoy cooking because why what what ain't you I did make um, around the time I got um, I became an Ubuntu member last year I did make this pumpkin this it was like a cheater cheesecake because it didn't take like hours to set but it was like this pumpkin cream cheese and I tried to make the Ubuntu logo in it and it kind of didn't come out really well but this is going to be um, for many of you watching this might seem really familiar but hopefully if maybe you're watching this and you're kind of new then you're um, then I think it's good to walk through it like we were doing this the first time so I have signed out and so that way you're not just kind of doing it from memory you're following the steps just like somebody would be doing using your tutorial so all right Oh, this is going to be awkward because obviously I use this for everything here. All right. All right. We're going, we're just going to use that. And then I'm going to find a way to delete this account. Okay. So, th so this would be good when we would actually this would be a great chance to take a screenshot so and this is when oh yeah we just go to print screen and so I know that there are places where we can add images to our tutorials. And so just let people know. All right. <laughs> now I have to. <gasps> Sorry about that. Okay, create a launchpad account. Navigate to. And here, this is thankfully something that is the same across disc courses. Navigate to uh, the Launchpad account creation page. And then you just there we go. Wrong separate. We just took that link that we went into and we just add that in there and you can see that it is um, okay I will switch back to this and again I'm sorry that we can't be sharing multiple screens so actually I think I know what I uh, no, I can't do, do that it to the Launchpad account creation page. Mm 
enter your and then if we go back to this which is I think what you all are still seeing um, enter your email enter your email address toggle the I don't have an Ubuntu One account. Okay, I'll go back. Um, please enter your full name. Select a username and password. And oh, um, let's see. Of course, read and accept. Read and accept the terms of service, data privacy policy, and canonicals. So, obviously, notice. It's, um, So we would do this. I'm just going to make oh. well. Let's see, I'm literally, this is going to be a throwaway account. I'm so sorry. Um, I'm just going to use yeah. Um, Username because I have this stupidly obscure last name. I think there's less than a thousand of us in the world with this last name. So here it's always good. Just you know, sorry if you got to see that password. I'm never going to use this account again, and I'm going to be delete e e eating it. So. And I'm going to hit yes, and I'm going to hit create account. Okay, and then, oh, um, so now we know what the next step is. Launchpad account. Verify your Launchpad account. Sure still, yeah. It really is amazing and that's why it was such a pain. It's like, oh wait, I have to make an, a new Ubuntu SSO and that it's like, oh, that's so frustrating because everything I use, not only for work, but for, um, but for communities and things just involves the Ubuntu SO. And it is really useful. And there's some things coming down the road to make it even more useful, which is really awesome. And so that's why we're putting this one first because once you get Launchpad and your Ubuntu SO, then you can use that to sign into Discourse. And so obviously we would want to put that before the signing up for Discourse because then we'd be doing it backwards and we wouldn't want to do that. And I am going to switch really quickly. Sorry, remove. Stop. Wait, 
reshare my screen so you all can see what I've been doing thus far. It's interesting that this is actually weirdly enough, even though documentation is kind of my bread and butter, um, this is the first time I've actually done kind of live documentation on screen. Um, and I wouldn't share the wrong thing. This is probably why. Uh, well, you guys are definitely getting an idea of how our work really goes, kind of hiccups and all. So let's see. Latest tutorials. There we go. All right. So let me go back to this uh, other Chrome window. So we followed. Oh, so we followed this. And then you see, this is the nice thing that this course does is that it just shows you how it's going to how it's going to look, which is just really, really handy. And so um, we kind of see that it gives us all the basic steps. And here we see that we've done kind of what we've done here to make the address shows up as an actual link there. And we've walked people through the basic steps. So that first step, yes, it does have these five steps, but it's just uh, we're still keeping it fairly simple here. And then, uh, and and then, what we would do last is we would ask people. The next step we would do would be to ask people to verify your Launchpad account, and which is just, hey, go to the email you just you just set up, and then make sure that we know it's you. And what I would probably do after this is because this is pretty good at the basic information. It is not exactly the most, I don't know, it is not exactly the most lively pros yet. So I would probably go through and edit. And so that's, which is another thing, drafts. Drafts are wonderful. Um, and start with like a rough skeleton and then uh, just kind of each pass, you know, it's like, okay, is the content good? Okay, how is the tone? Is this clear? And because that would, that's something I definitely noticed going through it. It's like, okay, we have all the basic info. Awesome. Um, do we have like um, that sense of, you know, fun that makes the reader want to follow along and keep going? Maybe not yet. And so that's what I would do in that next pass. Uh, and so unfortunately, we're kind of starting to wind down. Um, but our, but before we close up, um, does anybody have any questions besides um, the podcast Ubuntu Portugal? I am super looking forward to not only seeing your tutorial, but to seeing how you put it in action, uh, especially if you do a stream about that. That would be great. Um, but I hope that this has been a, um, like, and I wish we could have gone through all of the steps. I'm sorry about that. Um, but this is something that we can also pick up too. And I could, you know, I could, um, and I think especially as we go through kind of, um, how does one of these make it to the official tutorial page? Maybe we could even bring someone on from the documentation team to talk about that. And I think that would be, Reese, if you're listening, I think that'd be a great guest, you know, so they can say, what do they look for in a good tutorial? What are some ones that they, what are some tutorials that they know that they need? So uh, we can definitely have a chat with our co-workers and friends uh, to find out kind of that half of how the tutorials works because getting them up on discourse not a problem um, but we want to help you especially if you write something really great how do you get that to the tutorials page so 
Any questions, thoughts? What is everybody going to go eat after this? Because, damn it, some cheesecake actually sounds, you know, maybe not cheesecake, but we've got a coffee shop in this new apartment complex, and they do a pretty good cheese Danish, just saying. And it stopped raining, and I'm thinking a walk down there to finish up work might be nice. I'm going to blame all of you for whatever pastries that I get. Just saying. All right. Well, anyway, for all of you who came and all of you who might be watching, again, thank you so much. And please, if you think about, to like, what... And if you're trying to think of what what would I make a tutorial on, and just think of what is something that you know that, man, you really wish you would have known when you got started. Um, I will post a picture of me enjoying said pastry and post it up on Discord or Twitter or somewhere. That's about the extent of sharing pastries. One day, whenever we all get together, oh my gosh, I will so share pastries but until now it would you know it it would take so long to get wherever you are then I should just enjoy it for everyone <laughs> no I want to eat pastries well I'm sure there's a pastry providing facility somewhere near you that will hook you up with pastries just saying all right but next week tune in we are on don't forget next week we're at our early hours so for those of you in the states it's pretty early it's noon UTC but we are going to be having a guest from Ask Ubuntu so we are really excited about this she is probably the first of a few guests we are going to have from Ask Ubuntu and the Ubuntu hideout and so we will be getting the link out to that next week so Again, keep your submissions for the wallpaper contest coming. Keep checking the discourse and just keep doing all the fantastic things that you all are doing. And don't forget, if you're making content or just doing cool things with Ubuntu, share it on discourse, tag us, you know, t tag us on Twitter, all those things so we can just get out. Um, the news about what our amazing community is doing. So if you make a pastry that looks like the Ubuntu logo, share that. Oh my gosh. And then send me one, please. All right. Thank you all for coming. Have a wonderful, wonderful week weekend. And hopefully Reese and I will both see you at our early office hours next week. Bye.